Hello, everyone. My name is Leslie Epps, and I'm currently the co-ambassador of the Macaulay, um, the co-president of Macaulay Ambassadors, and I'd like to welcome you guys to today's yield event for admitted students. Um, I'm currently a fifth-year architecture major at City College of New York, and I'm super excited to be here and host co-host this event today. Um, just a little bit of background about myself. I think my college experience was quite different from other people's. I knew what I wanted to be. I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to get there professionally. And I think Macaulay was definitely formative in me understanding my identity, who I was as a student and as a professional. And I think um, being at Macaulay definitely led me to gain confidence in myself and be able to engage with professionals currently and, and from the past. And I've actually gained employment recently, no doubt because of my location in the city, because of the confidence I've gained in Mac Macaulay. And I'm super excited uh, moving forward in my career. So I'll give it off to Lauren. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Leslie. My name is Lauren Silverman, and I'm the other co-president of the Macaulay Honors Ambassadors. And I am a graduating senior at the College of Staten Island campus. I'm a um, cinema studies major and a design and digital media minor. Unlike Leslie, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I came into college. I was pretty all over the place because I was just excited to try everything. So I knew I was interested in the arts and humanities, but that was pretty much all I knew. So Macaulay really helped me get there. As you'll see later in the uh, in the event when we have our panel, you'll learn all about the different types of classes and resources at your disposal that will help you decide if you're undecided um, or if you already know what you're going to do. Either way, it's going to be incredibly helpful. And thanks to uh, all these wonderful resources at Macaulay, I am going for my MFA at Brooklyn College in screenwriting this fall. And I also got a wonderful internship at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, and I'll be returning there in the summer as well. So really exciting. So thank you. So now we're gonna move on to share some short videos. My last year at Macaulay and Queens is gonna be super bittersweet. When I was coming into college, I had a pretty set idea of what I wanted to do as a major. I definitely wanted to do biochemistry because those were the two classes I loved the most in high school. And it turns out that I no longer am a biochemistry major, I'm an accounting major now. Because at 18, even though you think you know what you want to do, it's, you know, it's a ball game. You have to play it out and see where you end up. I guess the transition in any major really was practically seamless. Luckily at Macaulay we have our advisors who really help us with any change that we have in our minds. I also had a thought of pursuing a dance career because I've been dancing for my whole life. You're able to keep your extracurriculars here at Macaulay. There is a club for you if you love poetry, if you love film, there's a club for that. So whatever you love outside of school can be found here too. I don't know who can tell you better about Macaulay than the people that are going here, the students, the faculty, the advisors. Somebody that I work very closely with in the building now came and presented Macaulay to us. I even remember hearing one person on the panel telling me that they had an internship in their first semester of freshman year. And I thought, that's crazy, you're a college freshman. So today I just came back from my internship at Ernst & Young. It's really exciting to be there. I'm getting a chance to see what it's gonna be like in the working world after graduation. I see people and meet people at open houses, and then I get to see them at Macaulay orientation and say, hey, I saw you just a year ago and you were thinking about applying to Macaulay and here you are. My name is Kristen Cornane. I am a student at the Queens College campus and I am class of 2019. At the end of high school, you know, I, I kind of sat down looking at a mirror and going, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? I was put in touch with a Macaulay alum. I went with my father. He basically, in the first 30 minutes, he heard about the, the grant to study abroad, the special honors classes, the laptop, and he literally looks at me and goes like, we're done, and he just walks out. The fact that he was sold in 30 minutes or less really had an effect on me. You can go to private school, end up with a massive bill at the end, You'll end up with the same degree, and you would have had a patch of grass to sit on, you know, your quad for four years, or you can stay in the city. The city becomes your quad, and you have an experience like no one else. The fact that I'm here in 2018, eight years after graduation, still raving about how great my experience was, that's really what's important to feel about Macaulay. We're not staged actors. I'm here at you know, 7 p.m. on a Monday out of my own free will. That's because I think the story needs to be told. My name is Maxim Bakalenik. I was a part of Macaulay at Baruch College, and I graduated in 2010. 
One of the words of wisdom that I really wish I had been given when I was going through the college process was look for a college that's going to be flexible. So I've changed my major a few times, but uh, I came to college thinking I was going to be a music major because I'm a percussionist. Then I realized that I love music, but not so much that I need to major in it. So then I decided to do psychology for a little bit, and I liked it, but I didn't fall in love with it. Then I wanted to do journalism. Again, liked it, didn't love it, and nothing seemed to click. But then I took this really inspiring uh, philosophy class actually with some of the amazing professors that we have here. It challenged me to write in ways that I've never had to write before. It challenged me to think in ways I've never had to think before. And it kind of helped me in every aspect of my life, including music, because it forced me to just retrain the way that I was used to thinking. And I think that's something that's super essential in college. This is the time where you try things that you've never tried before and when you sort of reevaluate the connections and the loves that you've had for a long time. The way that I discovered that music isn't what I want to do was by trying out three different clubs on my home campus of Lehman, two other clubs, you know, at Macaulay Central. Try out for that dance class even though you don't know how to dance, you know, join the radio station even though you have zero experience with DJing. The worst that's going to happen is you discover that this isn't for you, but the best thing that can happen is you realize that there's a part of you that you didn't know existed and it's going to help you become a bigger, stronger and just more interesting person. Hey everyone, my name is Victoria Smith and I'm a rising junior at Lehman College and I am the class of 2020. Great, okay, so we are gonna get into our panel now. So if all of our panelists could please turn their cameras on, I'm going to introduce everybody. And just one by one, as I call your names, you guys can just um, give a little introduction about yourself, um, you know, what major you are, or when you graduated, if you did, or when you will be graduating, and just a little bit, um, just as an intro before we go into the questions. So first I'm gonna call on Kwok, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kwok Hui Lee. Uh, most of my friends just call me Kwok for short. I'm currently a junior in the class of 2022 at Brooklyn College. So uh, I am I'm on the pre-med track, but um, when I got to Brooklyn College, I became a business major because I felt like that would round out my, uh, my portfolio of skills, so to speak, a lot more beyond just simply um, the usual typical pre uh, pre-medicine like field and um, specialties in biology and chemistry. And I felt that Macaulay has very significantly helped me with that, so. All right, great, thank you. Next time I'm gonna go to Max. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Max, I'm back Alenic. I go by Max. I graduated from Macaulay at Baruch College in 2010. So a decade later, still here. Uh, and I'm a senior vice president at Citigroup in the uh, Treasury and Balance Sheet Management Department. Nice to meet you. Great, thank you so much. Um, next, we're going to have Amrita. Hello, Amrita. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amrita Narine. I graduated from Macaulay in 2013 from um, Brew College. Um, I was a corporate communications and sociology major there. Um, and after college, I went to Harvard Law School, and now I am a fourth year associate at Dwayne Morris. Great, thank you so much. Victoria, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, my name is Victoria Smith. Um, I went to Lehman College and I graduated last year, class of 2020. I majored in philosophy, minored in music and political science. I'm currently an associate fourth and fifth grade teacher at the Ethical Culture Fieldson School. And in fall of this year, I'll be starting my PhD program at NYU in ethnomusicology. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. And um, we do have one more panelist, Kristen, but she's not here at the moment. So I think, Leslie, if it's OK with you, we'll just start. We'll jump right into the questions. Absolutely. Um, thanks, guys, for being here. I'm happy to see some familiar faces and some new ones. Um, for me, I think Macaulay was a clear choice because I really wanted to be in a place that supported me in my endeavors, but also knew the gravity of what I was trying to do and how precarious certain majors can be. Um, so I'm definitely curious as to why each of you chose Macaulay. So if everyone can answer in like a one minute or so, I think that'd be great. I think I'll start with Max. Uh, sure. Um, I was definitely not as confident about what I wanted to do. So I, you know, I did the college tour. I applied to a lot of places, visited a lot of places. Um, in many with, in many regards, growing up, my dad was my role model. So the first thing that made it Macaulay was the fact of he was sure. I think you guys saw me in, in the video 
30 minutes in, he was done. That's it. Like, this is where you're spending the rest of your life. And I'll be honest, I, I didn't want to, bu to, bud it, to budge. I, I, I looked for reasons. I, I still went to all the tours and I just kept coming back to the fact that a, no one can, no one even put together a package that was close to Macaulay between the study abroad opportunities, between being in the city, between being exposed to being able to take classes on multiple campuses and even the graduate center at the Macaulay building, there was just no competition to it. And B was to some degree, I didn't know what I wanted to do in business. I knew I wanted to do business. And then why am I going somewhere else? New York is where New York is where it's at. It's the heart of it. So why am I going to go to another city, study there, and then try to get a job in the summer? I, I wanted to be one of those students who worked, had an internship their freshman year. So Macaulay literally just made sense in every, in every step of the way. Oh, Kristen is here. Um, I'll ask the next question to Kristen, but I also like Kristen to introduce herself a little bit. Um, what uh, college you went to, not college, obviously your campus, um, and also why you chose Macaulay. I think I want to ask Kristen next and then we'll move on to Victoria. Awesome. Apologies for being a bit tardy, everyone. Great to see so many folks in the virtual audience. Um, so my name is Kristen Cornain. I'm currently a transaction diligence professional at EY. Um, I attended Queens College as a part of the Macaulay Honors Program and graduated in May of 2019. Why did I choose Macaulay? I feel like I love this question because it's so loaded and I feel like I could give so many, um, so many different answers. I would say, if I could say it succinctly, diversity of experience. Um, I think when I came into college, I was very set that I would be going to medical school. I was going to study biochemistry and that was really going to be the path for me. Um, but if it had not been for Macaulay, you know, allowing me to see so many different subject areas, also um, outside of academics, just socially and meeting different people and hearing about different people's interests, I honestly don't think that um, I would be where I am today. And that's in accounting, which is very different um, from, from biochemistry. So I would just say, I mean, it's a melting pot of, of so many really unique and talented students. Um, and I'm you know, forever grateful to Macaulay for, for giving me that community and, you know, giving me that good college experience, so. Um, I'll keep it short because I echo everything that Kristen and Max said. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to major in in college, as y'all saw from the video. I am that same person. I just don't have hair anymore. But yeah, I changed my major like six times. And I think that going to college in New York City and being able to take advantage of internships that I was able to get through Macaulay um, really helped with that process. And it helped me, you know, get to where I am today, which is going to a fully funded PhD program, you know, focusing on music. And that's something that I don't think I would have been able to do anywhere else because I wouldn't have had the internship experience in New York City. I wouldn't have been able to travel and meet people from so many, you know, diverse backgrounds and so many diverse places. Um, so that's really why I chose Macaulay. Um, and again, free college, especially free college. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> and Rita, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I'm pretty much just going to echo what everybody said. Uh, I actually did know what I wanted to do going into college. I knew I wanted to be a lawyer and shockingly, I am a lawyer now. <laughs> so uh, I was I already knew that I was going to rack up a ton of debt in law school and decided that Macaulay was the way to go. Free college is a huge advantage, especially if you want to go um, especially if you want to go to graduate school. I think that made uh, that was part of the decision. Another Another reason that I did it was because I was actually at an event very similar to this. Um, granted, it was in person back then. <laughs> and I met one of the panelists at the event. She was quite possibly one of the most impressive people I've ever met and a, a little bit intimidating. And so I actually ended up speaking to her. Um, she became kind of, she's still my mentor and one of my best friends right now. Uh, and she kind of guides me through life still at this point, um, this many years removed from college. Um, but she was just so impressive. And I thought, I would, I want to be one of those people. I, I just, I think that the, the students at Macaulay are amazing. And I think it's a great group to, to surround yourself with. Okay, yeah. So I think I'm echoing a lot of the sentiments that have already been said by a lot of the other panelists in that 
Macaulay has offered has a lot of um, benefits for you, especially because I know a lot of uh, my fellow current Macaulay students are especially people who have targets for graduate school or doing things beyond their undergrad, which racks up a considerable amount of money. College costs a lot of money these days. So uh, having the burden off of your back that Macaulay will um, support your tuition during uh, during your undergrad years is, is a huge boon, especially because um, I have plans to go to medical school, uh, you know, provided, you know, MCAT and all that. But even on that front, Macaulay has a large network of, uh, of advisors and especially your fellow peers who, especially the people who I study with at Brooklyn College, they've been very good to me. And I'm so glad to be able to make connections with very talented people who have helped me come as far as I have today. Thank you for all those answers. Um, I am curious, Kristen, can you explain what EY is really quick? I'm not sure what that means and I'm sure some other attendees would like to know. Yeah, absolutely. Apologies, I always use the abbreviation by default, um, but EY is Ernst & Young. It's one of the big four accounting firms. Um, so we do have a location in Times Square. So you may have seen Ernst & Young up the side of um, 7th or 8th Avenue in Times Square. Um, but I guess just while I guess we're on the topic, I can talk a little bit about what I do in my role at EY. Um, I originally started in audit, which is one of our largest practices, um, but I've since moved into transaction diligence, which um, is basically consulting and advisory work for some of our clients um, in the merger and acquisition space. Um, so it's been very, very exciting and definitely a different uh, different way. I didn't think my career would go prior, but you know, if anyone wants to know more about the accounting world and you know, what Macaulay has to offer in the realm of accounting, definitely happy to answer questions there as well. Awesome. Thank you, Kristen. And just so everybody knows, we are going to have the panelists and Leslie and I will as well drop our emails into the chat in case anybody has any follow up questions. So if you have further questions for Kristen, we'd be very happy to uh, give you her info. So we're going to go into our next question now. And this question is actually just for Victoria um, on the subject of undecided majors. Um, since you have, you know, you've spoken a lot about your journey as an undecided major, would you mind going into a little more detail about how exactly you decided upon your philosophy major? I know you mentioned it in your video, but maybe there's a little more you could talk about in regards to the resources you had, maybe advising and classes and, and those things. Um, the real answer is philosophy had the smallest amount of credits in all the majors that I was looking at. I was just like, all right, 27 credits, that's the way to do it. Like, do I wanna do 27 credits or 42 credits, you know, math. Um, so that's that's the joking, real, low-key, high-key, real answer. But in all seriousness, um, philosophy was kind of a mixture in a weird way of all the things that I had an interest in, right? So I loved, um, I loved psychology and I love, you know, analysis and trying to understand why people do what they do. And I think that goes in a lot of ways hand in hand with music, you know, communication, but then there's storytelling, you know, journalism. So um, I kind of didn't know how to bring all these things together. And then I actually wound up having like a two hour conversation with the head of the philosophy department who I'm still good friends with. Like today, he wrote my letters of recommendation for my PhD programs. He like told his 80 something year old parents who live in Ireland when I got into PhD programs that they're like, she did it, she got in. Like that whole family connection thing. Like we spoke for about two hours. Um, and then I also had Gary, um, Gary Schwartz, who was the head of the, um, uh, the Lehman Macaulay program. So having a conversation with a Macaulay advisor and then the head of the department and just being able to spitball all of my ideas and passions for all these things. And it was kind of like, yeah, you can study all these things in philosophy. And like, yes, these are the things that you can talk about. And you can talk about women in music. You can talk about gender and history and storytelling and all these things. So for me personally, um, philosophy was kind of like a happy medium of all of these different things, but I don't think I would have been able to figure out that this is the direction I want to go in um, without trying a bunch of different majors and seeing what worked and what didn't work. I totally hear you on the, the diversity of different topics you can discuss in Macaulay. I think that's one of the things that sets it apart. As a Macaulay student, you have access to so many colleges and schools and classes. And I think aside from being rigorous, it really lets you be exposed to the rest of the world. And I think that strengthens you as a person. I think that strengthens you as a candidate and really kind of, especially me, made me realize the things that I was definitely interested in and can hone in on while I was looking for a job. Um, I think that's how it really prepared me in that sense. Um, I wanna ask all of you to talk about your academic experiences and how the curriculum changed you. Um, so I'm gonna start with Amrita. Sorry, I was having a bit of trouble unmuting myself. Um, I love the classes at Macaulay. Being in Macaulay, we had 
access to first day registration, which uh, once you enter college, you might, you'll probably realize it's a very, very amazing thing. Um, that means that you get to make your own schedule. The only people that you're competing against are the other honor students. And it's, it actually makes it so that you can get into the classes that you want with the professors that you've heard about um, and the classes that you've been dying to take. That was, that was a huge advantage. Um, another thing that I did, which was a program that was an honors program, um, I believe it's a combination between a couple of schools, but I was able to have a writer in residence class with Jhumpa Lahiri, who, which was an amazing opportunity to kind of learn. I am not an English major, but it was still, it was still one of the highlights of my college career. Um, and I think, I think it's it, having the opportunity to take classes at different campuses is also great. I was able to take some Macaulay classes um, and that's just, it kind of exposes you to new people. So you're not just stuck with the people that you meet on, on the Baruch campus. You really get to know a lot of people across, across, across all of the campuses. Okay, hey, Kristen, how about you? Me too, I was having trouble finding my unmute button. Um, you know, when we get into our majors, right, we, we start taking classes that are really focused on the major. We get really close with some of our classmates at the campuses. Um, but one thing that always keeps us tied to Macaulay is those, um, are those four classes that we're able to take all together as a Macaulay community. Um, and someone closer to the classes, please keep me honest when I list these off because I think I may have forgotten a few topics. Um, but I wanna say it's science in New York City, arts in New York City, people of New York City, and the last one is escaping me. Someone help me. The future of the New future. York City. Future of New York City, thank you. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of people say the city is my campus when they go to a school in the city. And it's honestly true. And Macaulay really tries to drive that point home. Um, and I could just give a quick example of um, one experience from those classes I was really, um, I really treasure. I was able to go to one of the wastewater treatment facility plants here in New York City, and it doesn't seem glamorous. Um, although every time now I turn on the sink and I have fresh water, it's something you know that I look back on and say, I was able to go visit that and you know kind of investigate the purity of our water in New York City as a part of that class. And you know, if it weren't for Macaulay, I think I would have a very slim um, focus on my education. Right, I would have been just like siloed into accounting, but I've had all these like very varied and diverse experiences outside of that because of those Macaulay classes. So um, Leslie, just to what you said, I mean, making our, the students well-rounded and having a, a wide array of experiences is really what the program brings. Okay, Max, go next, please. Sure, uh, so I'll take this from two points. Uh, the, the class that I feel shaped me a lot, um, I'm going to har harp on the, uh, the peopling of New York City. Um, I did a semester long study of the history of Astoria, Queens, and it really changed the way that I even looked at my own neighborhood when I got home. It's, uh, you know, you, you start, it, a building stops being just a building and you start seeing architectural aspects and I'm not an architecture person that you're like oh that looks like part of this immigration wave and you start digging into it and it's actually oddly something that I've built conversations on at work at, as, as icebreakers and I think the thing that that professionally in the way that it shaped me is the breadth of trying to fit it all in is amazing it makes you an expert logistics person. Like, how do I get from Hunter on 68th to my internship at Spring Street, back to Baruch on 23rd? Oh, and there's an event at the Graduate Center tonight that I want to go to, and I need to fit that all in in a day. I, I mean, till this day, I don't think there's anyone on my team who plans meetings the way I do. It's like, I literally can run my clock on a half an hour basis. So yeah, it, it literally teaches you to think outside the box because you are the master of your own destiny in terms of, of where you want to be and what you want to take. And yeah, the first day registration, knowing the fact that there's no, no one stopping you from being able to take it, that's amazing. Thank you, I love that, oh my. Um, so I'm gonna ask Kwok, Victoria kind of answered this question already. So we're gonna have Kwok answer last. Okay, sure. Um, so yeah, I think uh, when discussing the Macaulay curriculum, you definitely have to mention the four seminars that I think Kristen had already touched on earlier. So these are four seminars that you take during your first two years at Macaulay. And 
to be honest, I feel like these classes were uh, were like incredibly insightful in all sorts of different ways because, you know, like I've mentioned, I, I'm a pre-med student. And although I felt like I had a pretty wide diversity of classes I've taken at my high school, I was still mostly very hyper-focused, I guess, in a lot of like the usual STEM stuff that I, I'm typically accustomed to. But with these seminars and with the diversity of, uh, of experience that like, you have, I think it widened my scope and helped to um, develop my, my knowledge and my experience in like in a lot more like the humanities and viewing different aspects of, especially like the city life that I think I wasn't, I hadn't opened my eyes to before. Uh, I think in particular, a lot of people particularly like the first seminar, which is the arts of New York, where um, oftentimes Macaulay will help to sponsor events that, um, that like different sections and different classes are able to go to. I believe during that semester, I went to, um, I went to at the Lincoln Center, I believe I went to, um, uh, there was a, there was a poetry night that I went to, there was, um, multiple plays, a musical, like all sorts of these different events that like throughout, uh, throughout that entire semester, I'd have to like block out different nights just to, have these events and and it'd be it'd be really interesting because uh, I also got to meet a lot of some of my closest friends while at these events, and furthermore, um, these seminars are held individually at your specific campuses. But like the professors that are asked to teach at these campuses usually introduce their own personal um, perspectives on the course, and there are a lot of really unique and intriguing fields that these professors will help take you on. Um, and in addition to, of course, these four seminars, there are other events that are held in the springtime at the Macaulay campus proper that help to foster a lot of cross campus interaction. Uh, they are like, this, uh, such as the STEAM fair. So um, in your first and second year, your seminar will help to like gear you towards making something either focused towards the arts or focused towards scientific research that you present at, at the main Macaulay campus. And I remember going to those. It's it is so interesting, I think, because not only was I able to meet a lot of different people at different campuses who are not normally used to seeing, but they had so many incredible different ideas and so many different like creative visions on all these different projects and applications that it was really interesting to see. And I took a lot away from that. Awesome, Kwok. Thank you guys so much. That was really insightful. And it's always great to hear about the seminars too, because people always have questions about those since it's such a unique thing to Macaulay. So moving on to our next question, I'm going to ask two people. Um, so one really interesting thing about Macaulay is that you have resources from your home campus and from the Macaulay Central Campus at your disposal. And one such resource is the, um, the amazing faculty members that are there. So I'm just gonna pick on two people and ask how have the faculty at Macaulay and on your home campus inspired you or just motivated you to get into your career? Um, so I guess I'll start with Amrita. Would you like to answer this question? Sure. Um, I actually uh, had the best of both worlds and I really took advantage of that. I think everyone has the best of both worlds, but it's whether you take advantage of it that really matters. Um, while I was at Macaulay, I was part of the Macaulay Scholars Council. So I was actually at the building quite often. And as a result, I got to know the staff really well. Um, one of the people who really helped me was also in charge of the Goldsmith program. Um, this was somebody that I was in a full panic attack because I had no idea what to write on my application for, for law school. My personal statement, I was like, I have no stories. I don't know what to say here. I know that I want to go to law school, but I, I literally can't put this together at all. I sat down with him for, I think it was actually one hour, told him all of the reasons that I had and how it didn't seem at all like a story. And after speaking to him, he just looked at me and he was like, but that's your story. And he outlined it, everything that I said. And I was just like, how did you do that? It was, it was a very, very uh, amazing moment for me because this whole time I thought that I didn't have a story and I didn't have the right reasons or, you know, kind of like why I wanted to do this. Um, so that was, that was one aspect. The other one is uh, my honors advisor, Lena Tuck, who uh, used to be at Macaulay, but is now at the Lehman campus. She was always there to guide me. Um, I, I have a tendency to try to put myself forward and do too much at once. And Lena was always there to tell me, I think that you might need to take a step back, take a break. Um, I will say I might not have listened to her as much as I should have back then. <laughs> um, but, but moving forward, once I, once I graduated I, and I took a break, I realized I was like, oh, this is what she's been trying to teach me this whole time. And every single time she was kind of there guiding me like this is maybe you should do this instead of this. How, 
how about you, we try out for this program instead? Um, she was she was really fantastic. And I, I mean, I have to say having your own honors advisor that's able to speak to you whenever you really want to, um, it's not hard to make an appointment with, with them. I was able to just walk into her office whenever I wanted. Um, and I think that, that that makes such a difference because I had friends that were at Baroque and this is a school that had uh, 14,000 kids when I was there. Um, and you, you know they could never speak to an advisor. It took weeks to to get to get on a schedule to speak with one. And then there's no personal level there because they don't really know who you are. Um, so I will say that the Macaulay advisors are also fantastic. Awesome, thank you so much. And yeah, it's coming from one of the largest CUNY campuses, CSI. Um, I can also say that it's amazing to have those advisors. Um, can we just get one more, just a brief answer, maybe from Max? Sure. Um, it's it's hard to pick. I, I mean, I honestly don't know where to start. So, academically, um, I'll I'll I have my the my capstone professor for my corporate finance class, Professor Brinberg, really taught me to think like I've never thought before. To me, before him, every every subject I had studied was siloed. So, you know, here's, here's your investment banking department, here's your accounting department, there was no overlap. And in his class, he basically, our, our course long project was to run our own company in a, in a simulated competition. And all of a sudden, I'm dealing with questions of a system generated about, about HR issues I've never seen coming, about how uh, Sarbanes-Oxley controls come into it it all became integrated in one big picture. So from, from that, having a, having a professor who's been in the industry for years, amount of years I can only guess was amazing. And then on a personal level, and I'll, I'll echo that point of really knowing these people. I remember coming into Douglas Medina's office. I think he was the, the associate dean at the time. And he, he, looked at, he looked at me, he's like, why do you look miserable? I'm like, I have an event today. It's like it's it was like a charity event for salsa dancing, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So he literally closed his door off his door for an hour and taught me how to salsa dance. People open the door. He's like, I'm sorry, we have a work event going on. Like, please come back later. And like, that's the kind of relationship you have with these people. I I ran into him in the street. Um, well, before COVID and like I, it's, it's like I'm seeing my favorite uncle. Like that's, it, it's literally the kind of relationship you build with people. Thank you, Max. That was really excellent. Um, so we're going to move on to our next question. This one is for Quok specifically. And I actually noticed the question in the Q and A. Um, somebody was asking um, about Macaulay helping your journey as pre-med. So that's actually one of our questions. So Quok, if you could just tell us about your journey as a pre-med student and how Macaulay has been preparing you for the transition to medical school, just uh, in some detail, thank you. Sure, of course. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'd be glad to talk about that. Um, so yeah, like I've mentioned before, I'm a pre-med student and uh, I'm actually a part of the Brooklyn College BA and D program, which is more of, I guess, a streamlined pipeline for students who want to get into medical school. Um, so my experience might be a little more different than some of the uh, some of my peers in the Macaulay program, but we there's a considerable amount of overlap and a lot of cooperation that happens still between them. So uh, I believe I, I did notice that question in the Q&A earlier, where he was asking about uh, what specifically was the most valuable, in my opinion, for helping in my journey as a pre-med student, there are a lot of factors I think that go into it. Uh, of course, I have to always mention a lot of my peers, some of them who have been sticking with me in all of like my, my science classes, all the, all the difficult exams, all the late night study nights, all the other stuff at Brooklyn College, Macaulay, who have really been through thick and thin with me for the last couple of years. Many of them have already been taking their MCAT, have been doing extremely well on them, and, and are now helping us who are taking the exam a little later on in the year, uh, hopefully to do extremely well, you know, fingers crossed. And so, um, I have that exam in two months. Um, so of course, beyond them, there are the advisors who uh, really help to supervise you on every step of the way, especially with making sure that like you're, um, you're challenging yourself with good extracurricular activities to, to buff up your resume, as well as helping you connect you to, um, to great opportunities and internships that you have that will help build your experience and your resume to be a good applicant for medical school. And once you get into medical school, be a, uh, a diverse and, um, and, multi and multifaceted uh, student. 
So yeah, of course, Macaulay, at least Macaulay at Brooklyn has a requirement for you to um, either study abroad or conduct an internship. And for many of the pre-med students, this internship revolves around um, either doing research with some of the professors that we have at Brooklyn College or finding a role um, doing research or helping out at, at clinics or hospitals elsewhere with uh, other doctors. And Macaulay help, the Macaulay community has a large network that helps you find these opportunities for you to do. So yeah. If you have any other questions, you can uh, put them in the Q&A and I'll be happy to answer them in more detail. Yeah, I'm happy you're here to able to answer that question. I know a lot of pre-med students are definitely curious about that and I wouldn't be able to talk about it, so I'm glad you could. Um, so Macaulay really prepares you for a variety of experiences from study abroad, internships, research. Um, personally, I gained a lot of my internships. I had an internship every year. I was that student that worked every summer and, and it all helped me in my career. And I think Macaulay students have this great ability to be self-driven and go-getters, but still be given that support that many students need just to be able to open the door. And I think Macaulay has definitely led me to a lot of these experiences just by letting me know about different opportunities and really helping me in offering that support. Um, so I'm curious to ask people, would you be willing to share the internship experiences you've had as a Macaulay student? Um, let's go with Kristen first. Sure. Um, so coming into college, I didn't think I would even have more than one internship. I thought, you know, I'll have my internship and that will be my career forever. That'll just set me on the trajectory. Um, and with Macaulay students specifically, that is definitely not the case. Um, when I came into Macaulay, I think it was my first summer, one person in the Macaulay central office um, on West 67th Street actually reached out to me and said, you know, I, I saw you filled out this questionnaire and you said you were interested in marketing. We actually have this company that's looking for a marketing intern. Um, and at the time it was, uh, you know, a major that I was exploring. And so I ended up um, interning with this startup company called Jetsy. It's basically a travel social media app. Um, and the woman who started it, her name is Shama. Uh, she was previously a director at Goldman Sachs. So I was able to kind of make that professional connection with her. Um, and even though the internship itself didn't work out, um, content wise, I found out that advertising and marketing wasn't um, exactly my speed. I was able to maintain that professional relationship with Shama and um, kind of ask her some questions on how I can pave my career in, in the financial services industry. Um, subsequent to that, I interned at a local uh, tax firm doing personal and small business taxes. And that's kind of where I started to get my um, initial accounting experience and then moved on to um, doing two internships at EY Ernst & Young over, over two different summers. So I would say, um, and I'm Rita, like you pointed out before, Macaulay kind of gives it to you all on a silver platter and it's really up to you to kind of go after those opportunities. Um, and I think the same can be said about other schools, but the way that I guess the array of opportunities that Macaulay provides are honestly unmatched, um, especially in the internship space. So, you know, as, as you begin your college career, I would encourage you if you come in with a set idea and say, you know, I definitely want to intern in this, but another uh, opportunity opens and another internship is offered, take it because you honestly don't know where it may lead or what professional connections it may allow you to create. Thank you for that answer. I'm going to ask Amrita to go next. Um, so Macaulay actually has really good connections with, um, with a number of different places, one of them being Dwayne Morris, which is where I currently work. Uh, Dwayne Morris does a Macaulay internship every summer where they hire two to three students um, to, to come and kind of, the, the students really, they start off with shadowing attorneys, but what they do is they get the opportunity to work on pro bono cases, um, to actually draft briefs and affidavits, and uh, if they end up doing work for me, they actually do extensive amounts of tax research, <laughs> um, and because of, uh, just because of that internship, I was able to get my foot in the door. Once I went to law school, I was looking for where I wanted to go back to work. Um, and I decided to go back to Dwayne Morris. Um, a part of it is just because of the, is because of the familial, uh, the familial atmosphere that they had. I really felt comfortable there. There's a number of Macaulay students that are also there. Um, I'm actually now in charge of the Macaulay internship program with the students that, and I'm one of the people that interviews the students to come in every summer. So it's been, it's actually been very full circle uh, in that regard. And Macaulay did hand that to me on a silver platter. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Um, and I do have to just add that I actually had in an experience, I guess it was kind of an internship through um, Ali Kamara and another Macaulay, um, 
another Macaulay alum shooting a video about Emrita at Dwayne Morris. So kind of interesting connection. Macaulay students are always connected everywhere. So very much fun. So here's a fun question. I'm going to ask this to Victoria. Would you like to talk about your, um, your study abroad experience? What was your experience like? What program did you participate in and where did you go? Uh, yeah, so I just want to clarify, I didn't do study abroad, it was actually an internship abroad, um, so I didn't like formally do this through the study abroad office, so um, it, it kind of connects to the last question. I had, I think four, I would say like four, you know, internships while um, I was an undergrad, and three of them were through this program that you're actually eligible to apply for as a freshman um, and as a sophomore. It's called the Jeanette K. Watson Fellowship, and I was awarded that fellowship in my second semester of undergrad, and I had three different internships. The final one was in Cape Town, South Africa. And I worked for this nonprofit called Sunke Gender Justice. Um, and I was a strategic communications intern. So I was helping out with a documentary um, about xenophobia in South Africa um, and issues such as HIV and AIDS um, and sex trafficking within South Africa um, and within the African continent, but specifically within um, the South African um, country. So that's what I was doing. And I was there for three months. And while I was there, I was also able to do an independent project about women in music. I went to the National Arts Festival in the Eastern section of Cape Town. And unbeknownst to me, it's actually one of the biggest music festivals of its kind on the African continent. I was there for four days. I conducted 13 interviews with people from like 12 different countries. And it actually turned into a sample project for my PhD program, which is what I'm gonna be focusing on now. Um, so it was really awesome and absolutely amazing. And I could not have done it without the support from the Macaulay community. Um, it was folks from Macaulay um, who told me about the internship, um, who told me about this um, application in the first place. And they, you know, helped me sit down through the various drafts that I had to do um, while I was there. So, and I think also being a Macaulay student was also very helpful um, as well. You know, like people know the Macaulay name. So when I said that I was, you know, a Macaulay student, when I said that I was a co-president for the Macaulay Ambassadors Club, like that was something that people, you know, took notice to. So um, it was an absolutely wonderful experience that as cliche as the sound was really a life-changing and career-changing experience. Super impressive, Victoria. Thank you so much. I feel like I just learned so much from you saying that. <laughs> Very informative. Um, Amrita, would you like to share as well? Sure. I actually did two study abroad during the time that I was in Macaulay. So, the, um, but I, I did both of the short ones. So I did a summer program in Italy, and then I did a winter program in Brazil. Um, for my summer program in Italy, it was actually one of the greatest experiences of my life. Um, I met another, I became very close to another Macaulay student that was there who I actually work with now and is one of my best friends. Um, but while I was there, so they have a lot of art classes that you're able to take, but through the College of Staten Island, I was able to apply to a program where I took a sociology class since I was part of my major. Um, and I, so the sociology class was about the mafia. Um, which is very, very cool to be studying while in Italy. Um, and we actually got to go to one of the sites in Florence where there was a bomb that was released. Um, so it was, it was really cool to be there and to see it. And it was also kind of one of my first times living away from home since I was a commuter that lived with my parents the whole time. Um, and it was, I, I have to say, it was one of my favorite experiences. It really, it, and it, the best part was that it was also free. Um, this, the second study abroad that I did in Brazil was also just another another chance to kind of bond with Macaulay students and other students from uh, different schools. This one I went through, uh, I went to this program through Hunter. Um, I was able to take a class on the history, on history in Brazil, but also on music. So I was taking two classes while I was there and also got to spend a lot of time at the beach as well. So that was, you know, a definite plus while studying in Brazil. Thank you, Amrita, for sharing. Um, at Macaulay, you receive one-on-one -on -one attention from advisors and NC College employees or college employees. Can you speak on your appreciation for the personal help and the kind of um, personal touch that advisors do have? I'm going to ask Max and Kristen to answer this question. Kristen, you want to go first? Sure, I can. Um, so my personal advisor, her name is Lorna Ronald. She has since um, moved on to another school, but in her time at Queens College, I mean, she... She absolutely changed the way um, I was able to handle school. And I think we alluded to it before um, at a CUNY campus, you know, we do have a great resource system of advisors. However, the Macaulay segmented advisors really are, are what, uh, you know, separate our program. 
And I remember when I, I decided I wanted to change my major from biochemistry to accounting. I, I honestly think I was on the phone with my mom outside one of one uh, outside of one of the school buildings, um, probably tearing up, just thinking, how am I going to get this done in the next two and a half years that I have left of school? Um, and I, I went into my advisor's office and, you know, basically told her um, I'm having a change in my interests. And, you know, she basically sat me down and told me everything that we would need to go through to make it possible. Um, and not only did we structure my schedule in a way that I was able to complete the accounting program, I was able to complete all 150 credits that I would need to obtain my CPA license. Um, so if I if it had not been for that one on one attention and that that personal relationship that I have with my advisor, definitely none of that would have been possible. Um, so I, I can't can't say enough about the appreciation I have for for Macaulay advisors. Well, I've already uh, discussed my dance classes with uh, Douglas Medina, so can't say anything beats that experience for me. But um, in terms of advisors, my advising experience with Macaulay actually started out before I was even in college. To, uh, I guess I decided to go visit family in the Middle East uh, before uh, starting as a freshman and accidentally found myself kind of in the middle of a war zone and i'm i'm texting my my would-be advisor brooke and she's like you know are, are you okay to come in on the first day and i'm like i'm not even sure i'm going to be able to make it to be honest and literally person went out of her way to put me in touch with an embassy put me make sure i had my, my passport my plane tickets everything was lined up not even with regards to college just with regards to my personal safety and then uh, Brooke ended up moving on and Stacy Backenroth became my advisor. And it's like Stacy just knew me. We, we sat down and I, she's, she, I, she asked me what I wanted to do kind of more towards my junior year. And I said, I want to I want to work for a bank. I want to be in finance. I want to do X, Y and Z. And quite literally, I would get sporadic emails of, did you see this internship? you need to apply to this. This is meant for you. And it, and of course, knowing that I never check my email, I would like 24 hours later, I would get a follow-up of, by the way, I know you didn't read this, please read this. So it was a person who was completely in sync with you and what your life goals are. Uh, my last internship when I worked for AIG, coincidentally, I had found it in the uh, uh, career uh, career office but I got four emails from Stacy about that in a matter of two days. Uh, not a group email, not, you know, copying five other people, just me. Just, me, just to make sure that I took the time and I applied because somewhere down the line, like a couple of months back, I said, this is what I was interested in. That, that's the level of advisement. That's literally the level of escorting through your college career that Macaulay provides. Awesome, thank you guys so much. And I think if you asked any Macaulay student about their advisor, they could just talk for hours about it. My advisor got an MFA in theater from Brooklyn College, so she ultimately helped me decide to uh, apply to Brooklyn College's MFA program. So really, uh, the, the advisors are amazing, and I think that's the number one thing that makes Macaulay, um, for me anyway, makes Macaulay stand out. Um, we're just gonna do a quick question next. Um, I'm not sure if this is only applying to Quok or somebody else about research opportunities. Um, if anybody has any research that they're planning to do or that an opportunity that they've had, would you like to share? Sure, I can answer that question for now. Um, so yeah, the research opportunity that I conducted um, was two years ago during my freshman summer when I had, through a Macaulay connection, been able to uh, connect with uh, Dr. Stein, uh, the head of neuroradiology at Maimonides Medical Center. So um, the research that I did was just doing some simple data entry with one of his residents where we were analyzing some patient uh, demographics and cases, which I found to be really interesting. And, um, and I believe the paper for that is going to be published quite soon. Um, but I am aware, so like otherwise, I know that several of my peers, especially in my year, have found research opportunities by working with um, some of the science professors at Brooklyn College. So a lot of these science professors will not only teach uh, sections of the large um, uh, large science sections like uh, general chemistry, general biology, they will also have their own um, their own side of research beyond that. So a lot of students, if 
they want to build like a better connection with that professor for like letters of recommendation or to buff their own uh, their own resume by getting involved with other people and in extracurriculars, especially regarding in research. Um, during their office hours or after class, they'd go and they'd talk to these professors and they'd find roles working in their labs for several years. Um, yeah, I know beyond that, um, Macaulay also, uh, at least our advisors on the regular, uh, do send us emails about different um, positions that are available to pre-med students, not only on research, but other in, in other roles in the pre-medical field especially for like medical scribes or uh, in assistance at different clinics. So yeah, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Awesome, Kwok, thank you so much. Um, okay, yeah, Leslie, you wanted to go for the next question? Yes, absolutely. So I'm a colleague, New York is your academic playground. I can say for certain that being from Long Island, like I knew a little bit about New York City, but not enough to really say I'm a New Yorker, you know? So I feel like being a part of Macaulay definitely led me to experience so many things just for example, the seminars, Arts in New York City, I still go to fall for dance like every year. I love it. And I got introduced to it through that class. And also just I can, um, professionally as well. I made so many connections in New York because I'm in New York. The first real architecture job I got is because I went to an event, met the person who owned the firm and got a job that way. So nothing more can be said. Um, but I am curious about you guys. How have you benefited from a colleague's location in the heart of New York City? I'm going to ask Kwok, Victoria, and Amrita. Sure, I guess I can answer this first. So I guess um, definitely with the main Macaulay campus's location in I believe Upper West Side, it's been a while since I've been off there. But yeah, uh, it's situated right in the middle of Manhattan. Uh, it's given me and my friends plenty of excuses to go up to Manhattan, take the train and just hang out around different parts of the city right before or after a meeting. Um, and of course, since it's right in the heart of the city, there's so many different uh, locations that you can hang out at. Um, as well as just, it just makes it very easy to just travel in, in between campuses or you meet up with your friends from other campuses. So I found that having all the freedom and just the, the simple availability to have all of the activities that you can get to in the city at your fingertips is immensely valuable. And Macaulay takes advantage of this too, especially when planning uh, a lot of their extracurricular events. Um, yeah, so I, am a native New Yorker. I've lived in the elite borough of the Bronx my whole life. And I would say that I consider myself a New Yorker, but I don't think I realized just how little of the city I really explored until I got to college. And, you know, uh, one of the first places we went for our first seminar was at the Brooklyn Museum. And before college, I've been to Brooklyn like twice. Um, so trying to navigate, you know, the train system and you know, making friends in all five boroughs and finding places, you know, to hang out and exploring the city. So on a personal level, that was great because since I'm a commuter student and since most Macaulay students are commuter students, um, I think that's a really great way of finding a sense of community, you know, just exploring the city together, finding great places, you know, to eat food on a college budget and all that great stuff. So that's how it's benefited me, you know, personally, but in terms of um, in a career standpoint. So I'm a musician, specifically a, a jazz musician, a jazz drummer, and, you know, New York City and jazz go hand in hand. I mean, you have jazz at Lincoln Center. We have a rich history of, you know, um, Latin jazz here. I was in a Latin jazz band on campus and off campus, and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I, you know, didn't go to another metropolitan, you know, city for college. Um, and even if I did go to a different metropolitan city, you know, New York is such a powerful place for the history um, of jazz, which is, again, something that I wound up writing my senior thesis on. It's something that I'm going to be studying in college, and that's why I'm getting a PhD from NYU, because I knew that I needed to be in New York City to do the sort of research that I wanted to do. And I don't think I would have been able to do that if I went somewhere else. Um, and just having Macaulay professors with such a diverse array of, you know, perspectives and passions with music, I mean, um, one of my Macaulay um, advisors, the one I talked about before, um, Gary, he literally came to my final jazz performance in high school. He was there in the front row with my parents and with my grandparents and his love of jazz really inspired me to pursue something in jazz and music. And again, I don't think I would have been able to do that if I went to somewhere other than Macaulay. Um, kind of adding on to that, I will say that the amount of dollar pizza that I ate during college was remarkable. Um, also, great way to save money. Uh, being in the city was was an amazing opportunity. Um, it gave me the chance to really, one, take internships. If you go to a school that's kind of in the middle of nowhere, you can't have an internship during, during the semester. I was able to intern at Senator Gillibrand's office one semester while I was uh, while I was taking classes at the same time. And it was just a matter of hopping on the train and going 
up a couple of stops on on the uh, on the six train. Um, also, you know, it's going back to kind of like the arts of New York City, that seminar that you take as a Macaulay student. I was able to go to the opera for the first time in my life. Um, I went to the ballet. I went to so a, a number of Broadway shows, off Broadway shows uh, throughout that time. And that it, that was all in my first semester, which really kind of got my love for the arts in New York. Um, and then as a result, I was able to kind of take advantage of being a student and getting those, those student rush discounted tickets um, that they have. So it was having having New York City really opens up a lot of opportunities, not only to have internships during the semester and kind of boost your resume, but also just to take advantage of all of the different things that the city has to offer. Great, thank you guys so much. Um, so these next few questions are about life after Macaulay. Max, I'm gonna ask you this. I know you have to leave right at five, so if you, maybe you could just quickly answer this one. Um, sure. Since you have a really interesting uh, career happening. So if you could just describe your experience in your field after Macaulay, um, what was it like for you competing in the job market as a Macaulay alum? Did it give you an edge? Like, what was that experience like? Um, it was, you know, knock on wood, it was great. Um, so I, I think I was able to leverage a personality uh, for, that I honed at Macaulay, for better or worse, uh, that really, I, I wasn't I'll be honest, you know, in my field, it's very common for someone to graduate, join an analyst program, do that for a couple of years, do maybe an associate program and kind of want, like work their way up the chain in these programs. And um, I mean, I saw a different way, the same way I saw as, a, as a, I saw a different way in education where Macaulay let me craft my own schedule and let me work in my own internships. I didn't feel like I needed to be bound by those programs. I didn't feel like I needed the handholding. I felt like I've I've been given four years of responsibility. Why do I need? Why do? Why now do I need handholding? So I spent one year in the analyst program at a bank, and then decided to go solo. I applied for a professional position. Uh, was able to again use that personality for better or worse to um, convince someone to give me a chance. And then I spent three years at JP Morgan um, act as an analyst doing associate level work. So start crafting um, uh, my experience there. And then I, again, I was never hesitant about kind of moving around and trying new things. I've literally built a career on chasing disasters. So when there was the London whale situation at JP Morgan, I joined that team to unwind that situation. When we had the settlement, when JP Morgan had a settlement with the Fed, I joined that team to help that situation. When Citi failed the Dodd-Frank uh, stress test, I joined, I jumped to Citi to, to, to fix that situation. I've actually crafted a reputation for myself as a someone who is not afraid to try new things i've worked in finance i've worked in controllers in risk now i'm in treasury and i'm also i've also become kind of known around by my peers as a problem solver so right now i'm i'm literally doing a role that's sort of like internal consulting where every day you come in and they throw a question at you that you don't know how to deal with and by the end of the day you have to come up with an answer so that is, you know, that's what Macaulay gave me. They gave me the confidence of kn knowing that I don't always have to have the answer starting out, but that I can, I do have the skill sets, the knowledge base, and the communication skills to figure it out as I go along. And I shouldn't be afraid to try just because I don't know right, right up front. Awesome. Thank you so much, Max. Um, Kristen, would you like to elaborate as well? Sure. I don't know how I'm going to follow that up, Max. I really don't, but I'll, I'll try my best. Um, so, so life after Macaulay, when I left college and I joined EY, um, I was very perplexed when I got to work that, you know, now this, this is work, right? Like I have to focus on my job. I thought, you know, I have to put my head down and I really just have to do a good job. I have to be the best on Excel. I have to ask very pointed questions, really just do my job as it's written in um, and then I tapped into my Macaulay, you know, who I was in Macaulay and said, wait a second, you know, this is not the way that my career is going to expand. This is not going to allow me to, like you said, move up the chain. It's time for me to start designing my own career. 
Um, so since that realization, which was very shortly after I joined the firm, um, I really spread my wings and joined many different, um, what we like to call affinity networks. Um, so I currently work with a diversity and inclusion initiative within my specific transaction diligence group um, to ensure that we are recruiting underrepresented minorities and making sure they're included in our workplace. I'm also part of our uh, PWN, which is our professional women's network. Um, so we're planning actually a wine tasting and virtual country tour soon um, for some of our, our UI professionals. And last but not least, I'm part of a strategy and transactions um, people advisory forum. So long story short, we are looking for ways to um, help our teams connect in the virtual environment in a really effective way. And the only reason I mention all of those things is that Macaulay kind of gave me the platform to say I'm capable of more, right? I'm capable to come here and do my job and do a great job, but I'm also capable of expanding um, my interests and putting myself into different groups, networking with different people and really allowing myself to build um, a portfolio. Um, and I recently was agile promoted early uh, to a senior associate. And again, not to toot my own horn, but I don't think that um, that I would have been able to participate in all those things and earn the promotion if, if it weren't for the foundation I built at Macaulay. Thank you so much for those answers. I couldn't, I couldn't echo anything more. Honestly, I feel like being at Macaulay has led me to really hone in on my confidence, what I'm interested in, my convictions through all the different interdisciplinary relationships I've had, whether through classes or through other opportunities. And I think that definitely helped me just get the job that I wanted and know what job I wanted and where I needed to be and really know my, my worth as someone who can lend my expertise somewhere. I feel like I wouldn't have had that if I hadn't been Macaulay. Um, so moving on to the next question, Macaulay students graduate debt free. All right, debt free. So what does this mean to you as you go into your further career, whether that's grad school or professionally, I'm going to ask Ambrita and Victoria to answer this question. Um, sure, happy to. So uh, being debt free is is the best thing ever. Um, once I was going to law school, law school is very expensive. And um, I ended up choosing to go to Harvard Law. Um, it was a variety of reasons. Um, but when I when I went there, I felt comfortable making that decision because I was going in with zero debt. Um, and that that was that was kind of the biggest thing. Otherwise, I might have chosen to go to a school that had given me a, that had given me a lot more money, but might not have been the best fit for me um, because that wasn't a factor involved. I just, I, I really can't praise Macaulay enough for the debt free for the debt free thing. And I had um, the the same mentor that I had mentioned earlier also went to also went to Harvard Law with me at the same time. Um, and she was just like, "Why are we going into debt now? This seems crazy." But you know, we had that chance to to really save our money, save our time, and kind of just make that decision that was right for us later on because we were able to get so much through Macaulay. So um, just a reminder, I'm class of 2020. So I graduated last year during a global panini that nobody was expecting that we are still in a year later, virtual graduation, all that fun stuff. So I do not have any other friends that you know, graduated debt free and trying to find a job right now, even for someone who has, you know, fantastic grades and all these other great credentials, like it's very difficult to find a job for most people. Um, and honestly, that was something that I was scared about, you know, when I graduated, I was like, I have a philosophy degree, like who's going to pay me to philosophize in this economy? Like, what am I going to do? And I knew that I was applying for grad school as well. So I'm kind of like having this existential crisis moment. But I had a conversation with one of my friends and with my parents. And when I tell you, I just breathed a sigh of relief when they said that. They were like, you can take your time right now because you don't have any debt to pay back. You can focus on applying to grad school. You can focus on finding a job that you enjoy. Focus on finding a job that you're interested in, which is what led me to you know, um, being an associate teacher right now. So I'm teaching fourth and fifth graders and I'm teaching them about music and culture and history. And you know, th that's something that I absolutely love. And I'm able to do you know, speaking engagements at museums about jazz in New York City. And I was able to focus you know, this time on applying you know, to grad school. And that's something that I don't think I would have been able to do um, if I was focusing on trying to find a job, not a job that I cared about, not a job that I loved, but a job that, you know, was going to pay bills for lack of a better term. So graduating debt-free is no one could have predicted this, you know, global pandemic. No one could have predicted what, you know, the world looks like right now. And I think that 
um, understanding that life is unpredictable and understanding that you're always going to be changing your mind and you're going to go in different directions. If you can set yourself up for, you know, financial success early on by going to college debt free, your future self will thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go all the way around the panel. And if you think that you, you really wanted to mention something that you just didn't get a chance to, um, I'm just basically, I'm just asking you for a closing statement, but feel free to wrap in any other experience that you would like to mention that you weren't able to mention during the, uh, the panel. So I'm going to go first to Quok. Uh, sure, I really don't have too much to add. I think I might have covered a lot of the points I did, but in case that anyone does have any questions specifically related that they think I can answer, uh, my email has been linked in the chat, so you can go and message me on there and I'll get back to you really quickly about it. But yeah, um, at this point, I'm rounding up my third year at Macaulay and I really don't have any regrets about it. So I, I hope that helps to paint a picture for you about how satisfying this has been for me, especially um, given like, I don't know, especially about this tumultuous time, I suppose, especially this part of my pre-med journey. Definitely. Satisfying is an excellent word to use, Quok. I feel the same way. Um, how about Kristen next for a closing statement? Oh, boy. I want to make it a good one. I want to make it a really good one. I, I think we've been through a lot, um, you know, and what all the panelists mentioned. I think we hit on, on the big points. Um, I would just say, you know, no matter where you end up choosing, Macaulay is the right place. <laughs> that that is my plug, and and that is my um, that is my true belief. I mean, I the relationships that I've built at Macaulay um, have been, you know, just from a personal standpoint, absolutely incredible. I met my current partner at Macaulay, and I'm you know happiest I've ever been. Um, met so many friends. I have mentors that I still connect with at Macaulay. So I would just say that, you know, this community is one full of people who are willing and eager to help you. Um, in any capacity, whether that be professionally or personally, just a shoulder to lean on sometimes. Um, so I, I can't say enough about how great this community is. Awesome, thank you. Um, so Max had to go, so we will go to Amrita next. So the philosophy that I went into Macaulay with is you get in, you get out of it what you put into it. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest fears that a lot of students have is that they're going to a commuter school. It's not going to have that same vibe. They're not going to be on this, you know, this huge campus with all with all, all these people in dorms. Um, I, obviously, some of the campuses do have dorms, but that's kind of the general idea about commuter schools. But when I was at Macaulay, I really got involved in in all clubs, both at the Macaulay building and at my home campus at Baruch. And I was at the campus all the time. I loved it. Um, I had a bunch of friends that were there and, you know, it really didn't feel like a commuter school when I was there because I was able to kind of make that, I was able to get that same vibe that I had, that I think that people got from being on campus. Great. Thank you so much. And then we will go to Victoria. Um, I'm going to echo what everyone says, but honestly, Macaulay really has allowed me to have a really great work-life balance, and that's something that I really think that students need to take in consideration when they're looking into colleges. Um, I was able to join clubs on and off campus. I was able to travel to parts of the world I never thought I'd be able to travel to. I'm about to start a PhD program in something I'm absolutely passionate about. I did it debt-free and similar to Christian. I also met my um, current partner, not at Macaulay, but at Lehman, you know, in the music program. So I'm happy on a personal level. I'm happy on a career level. And I was able to do this all debt-free. And that is something that I, I I can't put into words just how much that means and how amazing that is and the freedom that that allows me to have just um, in every way possible. So go to Macaulay, <laughs> plug, go to Macaulay, that's it. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, the panelists, you guys are really amazing. I think you really helped paint a picture of what the Macaulay experience is like from many different um, many different majors and just different walks of life. And that is something that I think is incredibly important for people um, who are looking to attend the school. You don't wanna just hear from one type of person or one type of major. So we have a really well-rounded, very intelligent group of people. So you guys are amazing. Um, so I'm gonna hand it back to Leslie to close out our program. Thanks, Leslie. Yes, yeah, so we are unfortunately at the end of our program. I definitely want to thank all the panelists for your amazing answers, the ambassadors too, for your help on the back end, answering all those questions to so like 90 questions at one point. It's crazy. 
um, and also the um, relations team and helping us put on this panel and just helping us out when they can. I really appreciate that. If you have any specific questions for one of us, our, emails, our email address will be in the chat soon. You can write to us directly and we'll respond to you. If you're interested in becoming a Macaulay ambassador like one of us, please reach out to Ali. I'll add his, um, I'll add his email right now to the chat to give me one moment so everyone can see. Um, he'll give you more information, but personally as a Macaulay ambassador, I think it's completely changed my life and I'm not exaggerating. I think when I first came to college, I didn't, I was just like frazzled. I didn't know what I was doing. Like I knew I wanted to be an architect. The middle ground, I wasn't so sure about. And I think through becoming a Macaulay ambassador, I've come into my own. I've gained confidence in just talking about myself and really understanding what I like to do. I like outreaching to people. And that's definitely through the Macaulay ambassadors, I've realized that. And I've been able to expand upon that within my career and just really have a good sense of self. I think that's what Macaulay ambassadors really do. Being able to really analyze the things that you've done in your career, but also your want to help others as they go through college. I think that's incredibly important to becoming a Macaulay ambassador. So if you can, um, if you're interested, please again, email Ali or any one of us and we'll tell you all the great things about being an ambassador. Um, so if your questions were not answered, you can reach out to the speakers once again, and those emails will be in the chat soon enough. Um, so thank you so much. I'm really appreciative that everyone came and I hope we answered all your questions. I'm happy to hear from you soon.